Hello, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined today by Sam Harding of the Cyberdesk. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Hi, great. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thank you. Um, Sam, you and I were talking off camera about um, obviously the massive efficiencies that uh, a range of different websites and plugins can deliver for their for estate agents in general. Um, and everybody's got at least one website. Um, everybody's got plenty of calls to action dotted around their social media, on their email links. Um, there's lots and lots going on out there and, and generally speaking, very helpful to us as estate agents. But that also means that it has the potential to go wrong from a cybersecurity point of view. Um, a lot of a lot of websites these days sort of use um, WordPress um, type setups um, as their as the basis for their websites. And as I understand, they're not always the the safest in in the industry. So take us through some of the the pitfalls and and the sort of things that you guys do for agents. Um, okay, so um, I said WordPress is a, a huge player for the websites. Um, it's easy to use. You can get many plugins and they're all mostly really useful for estate agents. Um, what happens is with WordPress, um, it's very out of the box. You install it and uh, a third party can manage it. Um, the issue is with websites, um, most of the time they're looked after from a security point of view. And it's very easy to let your guard down on websites if a plugin's not updated. It can open up security holes. And most of the time, an out of the box website isn't properly patched. There's default usernames and passwords which are left. Um, certain parts of websites can expose information, such as all the usernames. And um, because there's so many components to a website, an attacker could quite easily, or would, if they, if they knew it, they could go in and cause all sorts of troubles. And with your website being the, the front facing of the brand, um, if your website was compromised, you can have a, a very messy situation to clear up. You can have all the content destroyed and it can show some sort of negative text or images. Um, Google can blacklist it so you can't actually access the website through something like Chrome. You get a big red page that says this page is dangerous. And um, I said, when they have all the call to action pages on social media, all your marketing campaigns that link back to the website they're going to be useless at this point because no one can now access your website and see what the agent has to offer. Um, so, so as I understand it, it's cybersecurity is almost a, a 24 seven job. It's something that you can't afford to relax on even for a day and that you guys go through a sort of a daily testing regime on, on the sites that you look after. Yeah, so we have constant software that monitors the website's uptime. So if the website does go down, the person know about it, it gets back online as soon as possible. Um, but our software is finds as many security vulnerabilities as we can. We'll patch them as soon as we find them. And then we sort of generate a report and send it off to an agent. Um, part of it can also be looking at processes. So are all the passwords the agents are using strong enough? Um, you know, do they follow at least seven characters, capital letters, symbols, numbers? Um, and so, if the agent wants to, you can host the website as well on a hosting platform. It allows us to, sometimes if the agent hosts a website on a third party, it can be more difficult for us to get access and make the security fixes. It's gone hours, we can go straight in and fix it whenever. Um, so it was a really good technology. As a defender of a website, you have to patch every single vulnerability, but an attacker only has to find one, and that's it, they're in. So our job, we said, is Constant your job is, is harder than, than the guys trying to break into <laughs> it. Um, and just in case anybody sort of wonders what the potential pitfalls of having weak cybersecurity is, I mean, these days, uh, websites are far more advanced than they ever used to be. We've got client login areas, uh, some websites process payments. So we're handling a lot of sensitive data that we as agents have got a lot of responsibility over in terms of GDPR and data security. Um, and a, a hacking attack can be an absolute nightmare. About 10 years ago, before uh, any, of, uh, any of the capability um, to handle sort of payments or client login areas existed for our websites, I remember we had a just a standard estate agent's website. It will allow you to look at our listings and, and so on. And we came in one morning and the whole thing ha had sort of been taken over 
and diverted to, I think it was an online casino based in Nigeria at the time. Um, and it was, it was a worry. Um, but luckily for us at the time, the, the very, um, the biggest problem we had was we couldn't display our clients' properties in the way that we, we needed to. Um, and so it was a scramble for about seven days to try and sort of, rest, you know, wrestle back our, our IP and everything else and, and get it back up online and the website needed to be done afresh but these days had the same thing happened to us today that would uh, be an absolute nightmare in terms of um, the data that we now hold is just far it's just vast compared to where we were say 10 years ago and um, and we probably estate agents only only cover a sort of a fraction of that market if you like you've also got ma uh, managing agents who do use websites regularly for payment processing and i would imagine that if credit card details were to start going asunder um there's <laughs> there's going to be a, a hell to pay and it's just a nightmare you don't want to you don't want to get involved with so prevention is is very much the cure isn't it one hundred percent agree. Um, as soon as it happens once, you can be lost for forever, essentially. Um, yeah. Especially when it comes to data, when it, you know, email addresses, specific bank cards. Yeah. So, um, so, so, for for an average agent who's looking to sort of beef up their security, and it's not to say that their current website providers um, or IT companies not not giving them a good service, they may have a perfectly good you know, out of the box uh, estate agents website, it does the trick for them. But it, cybersecurity is another layer of service that you, you can never scrimp or save on. You can't have enough of it, can you? Correct. So a lot of the time, um, internal IT infrastructure be protected through either an external team or internal, so system administrators, that'd be their role to look after the network. Your providers will have their own internal processes for securing their systems. Um, websites always seem to bit out of the out of the picture for some reason, and um, our job is to make sure that component is what's secured. So you can have you can spend tens of thousands a month on internal network security, but that doesn't touch your website at all. And in in terms of um, how you can help agents, so if I'm an agent looking to access your services today, um, what's the next step? Do I just get in touch with you? Do you have a look at what I've currently got at the moment and sort of give me a, a bit of a risk assessment of where we're we're most open at the moment, or or do you do you handle it a different way? Um, so if you were to approach me and ask me to do a quick evaluation of your website to see how much I could offer. Um, with your permission, I can run my software against your website. Now, give me a brief of how many issues there are. You can tell me how many security issues there are, but also SEO and performance, if that is something you wanted to have looked into as well. Um, we will find issues like out of date plugins, um, WordPress issues, if it is WordPress or Joomla, um, and we'll pass over. And if you want us to then proceed and become your website security provider, We'll get that. We'll ask for the details, to access your website, and we'll do a full analysis internally and externally. And so, we'll in, in terms of onboarding with you and coming on board, it's a fairly swift process. That it, it's not something that takes weeks. It's maybe something that takes a matter of days. Correct. Yeah. So um, we had a, a a client come to us with a website that had been hacked. Uh, all sorts of problems there. We had the website back online and secured within two hours. Um, and if it's not hacked, we can get the first assessment done really quickly. Yeah, no, well, that, that sounds that sounds awesome because I suppose when it does hit, people are in a panic, aren't they? And they just need to know that, that they're secure as, as quickly as possible. Um, in, in terms of, uh, you mentioned plugins and, and um, websites and so on and, uh, and various different sort of layers um, of vulnerability that, that we now have. Um, and you mentioned that it, it does interplay with C SEO, which um, obviously is, is going to push you up the search ranking. Um, Google are quite sort of strict on, on those things these days. And if you do have security vulnerabilities on your site, you're simply not going to rank as high as you should do. Um, so with the security vulnerabilities and your ranking, um, there's a, a common one, which is having, when you type in a URL, it'll be HTTPS. That's the secured version. Um, 
that is managed by having an SSL certificate. Now, if you haven't got one of those, which you can get for free, Google will punish you sort of for not providing that secure method visiting website. If your website has an out-of-date plugin, that as an immediate SEO situation is not going to be a problem. But if someone takes advantage of that out-of-date plugin and hacks into your website and put and puts content on they don't want there to be, Google would then find that information and they would either blacklist your website completely, which can take a few days to be undone. Um, but the SEO penalty will last for a long time and it can take you months and months to get back up to the top again. Um, now, I say it, if you get hacked a second time, Google are really strict with this because if you get well, the second time being blacklisted, they'll, I believe it's, um, I think, like 30 days that you're blacklisted for and you can't appeal against it. Um, right. They are, they can be really strict. So it's difficult to sort of negotiate with Google. I mean, I've heard of agents who've, who've had to sort of liaise with Google over various different issues. Sometimes you get, you know, Google reviews, for instance, are left anonymously and it, clearly you, you can't track down whether that's a competitor or a disgruntled customer. Mm. And Google are very indifferent to, towards that. And it's hard to get through to them, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it can be. It also spans beyond just websites. So let's say your, you, you know, your email addresses are hosting the same server as your website. If that IP address gets a bad reputation and gets blacklisted, it can then affect your email deliverability. So if Google's blacklisted your website and you try and send loads of emails to people on Gmail, it's going to push it into the spam because it sees that IP address as a potential threat. So the answer is start early. Um, and, and really sort of make sure that you're on top of it before it, it hits because yeah. um, potentially and it can be extremely expensive as well once you're into, uh, once your website has been hacked and, and taken over. There's all sorts of stories out there from sort of simple phishing scams that, that, that will try to divert monies, client monies very often are, are, um, are, are an area of vulnerability, but it can also be that um, people have been held ransom over their um, their IP address and, and and their website, and they won't relinquish it until you pay them X amount in in Bitcoin or whatever it may be. But those stories are out there. Those stories are are real. Presumably. They're very real, yeah. And um, you'll see, you know, businesses that work really hard to get up on the website perfect. They're happy with the content, and then it's just gone in a you know in a few minutes. They've lost total control of it over the website. And like, if, if you, once someone else has control of your website, you, you kind of, it's down to them now what they do with your website. They could do anything they like. They could just delete everything. They could upload malware to it. So people who click on the website could then receive malicious content. Um, and a lot of people um, will trust a website that's from an established business. So if it's an estate, it's been around for 50 years. If you visit the website and it says, download this tool um, yeah. to access properties on your computer, they may go, oh, that's, that's, a cool, that's a cool feature. They'll click on that, and all of a sudden they've got some malware on their computer, and it's going to spread. Yeah. So people can visit the website, and they won't know that. And the agent may not necessarily know that that's been added to the website. So it'll be a nightmare for reputation management for that agent thereafter as well. Yeah. Sam, it, it's a fascinating topic. It's one that I don't think we cover enough because we, we talk about websites. We talk about the importance of having great content and being engaging with customers, but we don't talk about what happens when it goes wrong. So before it goes wrong, get in touch with Sam. All of Sam's details on the Cyberdesk can be found on kerfuffle.com. Um, Sam, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you very much.